Hey, everybody. All right. Today's uh, Labor Day here in uh, China, International Labor Day, actually. I was kind of wondering, what came first? Did America's Labor Day come first, or did the International Labor Day come first? Anybody has the answer? Just write it in the comments below. Uh, but it's kind of funny, I came up to the mountain here and <clears throat> saw a big crowd gathered at the entrance, or the, at the foot of the hill, and uh, I was kind of wondering, what's going on here? Is it just the holiday? And uh, as I got closer to the foot of the hill, uh, I saw it was a big crowd, and I said, geez, maybe it's closed or something, and they're kind of waiting for them to open it up or something. But uh, just as I got to the front of the crowd, kind of branded, the trail branches off to the right and the left. I usually go up the right and come down the left. All of a sudden, the guy goes, go. <laughs> just, I mean, exactly at the time when I'm at the front of the line, and uh, everybody starts running. So obviously, there's some kind of race or something that I didn't know about seems to happen a lot here <laughs> these last two years for me and uh they all go running up the hill and uh, i just kind of casually go no no i'm not here for this i'm going to the right anyway. since it's uh, also mother's day i wanted to talk about uh, my mom an experience i have that i've been thinking about recently uh not exactly sure why maybe it has something to do with the avengers or something like that but uh at the time, uh, I guess I was about 13 or 14, and uh, and I used to be a big fan of Starlog magazine. Now, in the 80s, Starlog mag magazine was like the go-to place for science fiction news, movie news on science fiction movies. It started in the 70s, about when Star Wars came out, and became really big in the 80s. And back in the 80s, you know, that was that was your internet. That was the only way to get information. So like. I had a subscription, and once a, once a month, Starlog Magazine would come to my house, and it made me, you know, I just remember being so eager to open the mailbox every day uh, to see if that magazine was there, because I was dying to see, you know, behind the set scenes and, and news about my favorite films. And that really got me started in, in filmmaking, really, it was one of the reasons I, uh, I took a deep interest. <laughs> I uh, had a very serious love <laughs> for uh, for science fiction films. But anyway, yeah, it was back when there was no internet and, you know, TV had three channels and, and you know, you had to wait. You had to wait for things. You had to anticipate. And uh, so I loved getting that magazine. It was just, it was just you know, I would just read it page to cover to cover once I got it. And so... One day I read in the Starlog magazine that there was a uh, convention. They, they were going to have a big convention. And this was a big deal, you know. This is before Comic-Con. And I was really excited. And I just really wanted to go to that. Uh, conventions were just starting to take off. Sci-fi conventions. I remember in Albany, <coughs> they had started with Fanacon. Yeah, if anybody remembers that, shout out to you. Uh, and they were just awesome experiences for me as a kid. It was, uh, you know, big rooms with, with panelists and cartoon or comic book drawers and people involved in the movies and you could find very rare memorabilia and start to learn about the filmmaking process even too. You know, I remember Super 8 filmmaking was a big deal um, for a lot of the science fiction fans. <coughs> So I read about this convention, and I was dying to go. You know, I wanted to go. It was in Boston, and uh, so I took it to my parents. And up to that point in my life, it was really my dad who did most of the, uh, who kind of uh, chaperoned me on most of these kinds of adventures I had or <laughs> explorations I was making in the in the in, in the industry, I guess. And uh, you know, so he would. He'd be the guy to go down to New York City with me and drop me off at the movie mem memorabilia store and, that he actually introduced me to. So, so love and kudos out to my dad for that. You know, and I started to realize I could buy things like press kits and and movie posters and, <laughs> and one sheets and foreign foreign magazines and things like that, all about my favorite films. 
cost a little bit more money, but, and you know, I was living off of lawnmower money at that point. So it took me a while to get a hundred bucks. It took me quite a while sometimes just to save that up. And, uh, but my dad was always there and he always kind of chaperoned me in those events. I always kind of went with me and he kind of was interested in it. You know, I guess it was probably fun for him, I hope. Uh, so anyway, uh, I brought this to my parents. I said, the Starlock car, I'd really love to go. Can I do this? You know, birthday present, Christmas present. <laughs> I tried to negotiate my way into it. I, you know, you can, <laughs> this will be my Christmas present. This will be my birthday present, whatever, you know. I'll pay for the ticket. Uh, and I guess they went and talked it over, my mom and my dad. And, and my mom said she'd chaperone me, which was kind of unusual. My mother had never really sort of... She'd been, it played a big role in sort of my extracurricular activities, no doubt. But uh, this was kind of the first time it would just be me and my mom doing something, um, doing something like this, you know, kind of exploring, um, exploring something together. And uh, so they said yes, and you know, then it was uh, pay for the tickets, and you know, once again, there was no internet or anything like that, so you didn't get emails. So you sent your money off in a money order, and then you just kind of waited at the mailbox for uh, your tickets to arrive, you know? So that was all, you know, I just remember months and months of anticipation and things, uh, waiting for these tickets to arrive, and as it got closer, getting more and more excited. And so finally it came, and so me and my mom drove down there uh, to Boston. Um, at the time, it was being held in a brand new hotel. Boston uh, Sheraton or Boston Hyatt, I'm not really exactly sure. Uh, if you look it up, Starlog Magazine on Wikipedia, I think they give a little information about it there. And me and my mom drove down there, got in our hotel room and got, her, got registered for the convention and we were on our way. And it was just kind of like one of the most kind of amazing <laughs> weekends I can remember in my youth. And uh, one of the first times I ever kind of spent with my mom uh, there at that convention. And I say amazing just because there's just so many times I, I brushed with fame, you know, <laughs> during, that, uh, during that convention that was so un un you know, unanticipated or unexpected. Uh, the first time, first thing I did, I think I went, went to an auction and uh, it's kind of the first auction I ever went to. And they were auctioning off uh, movie memorabilia. And a Star Wars script came up, one of the original Star Wars scripts. Journal of Wills, a whole bit there. And I was pretty excited about that. So uh, I got into a bidding war with somebody. And like I said back then, this was hard for, you know, you lived off lawnmower money. So, you know, getting a hundred bucks saved up took a long time. You had to wait for the grass to grow. <laughs> and so I finally got, to, so I had a little bit of money saved up for this convention and I got in this bidding war and I ended up winning it. And my mom, I guess, was pretty surprised at that, just as I was too. Uh, I got the uh, Star Wars script. <laughs> and I was, you know, really excited about that. Uh, I got the script. My mom was pretty surprised that I got it. I won it. I won it for about, I think, 50 bucks, which was pretty reasonable, actually, back then. And uh, that was my kind of my first kickoff to the uh, convention. But as time went on, just like some more, it's just th these great things started happening. Uh, the next thing that happened, we went to a Buckaroo Banzai, the Adventures of Buckaroo Banzai. It's a film with uh, Peter Weller. And uh, knew a little bit about it. A little bit interested in it more, just kind of excited to be there and check everything out. Went to the panel, all the stars came out, the director showed clips of the movie. And then they said they were handing out tickets as you came into the hall. Said, hold on to these tickets, we're gonna have a raffle at the end. So uh, we held on our tickets there and said, all right, we're gonna do the raffle before the, we uh, end the panel. And one lucky winner will win a production jacket, you know, a jacket that they had uh, made for the film. 
buckaroo bonsai all over it and stuff like that. So you know, these, are crew, these are the jackets crew members wore during the film. And they had the raffle and my mom had to take it. <laughs> well, I had to win a ticket. I was like, well, you won, you know? Go on up there. Your mom's like, no, 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 I don't want to do that. You go up there. So uh, she gave me the ticket and kind of went running up to the stage, a little bit scared, a little bit excited. <laughs> and uh, they gave me this crew jacket, which I still have today, uh, though it doesn't fit anymore. Uh, stored away my stuff. And uh, came back to my mom and was like, wow. This is awesome, you know? So I was pretty excited about that and I was amazed that my mom <laughs> had the winning ticket. Of, I mean, we're talking hundreds of people. So, uh, but that didn't, it just didn't end there, you know? Actually, it turned into a little controversial, kind of my first brush with uh, censorship in the media because, uh, you know, they, the panel hadn't ended. They had warded, they said, you know, stick around. We want to get a picture of you in the jacket for the magazine. I said, awesome, huh? yeah, no problem. Hey, I think it said, my, can my mom be in it? Because she, actually, she won it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, so we're waiting for the panel to end. I got my jacket, and somebody kind of creeps up between the aisles. You know, like there's an aisle, and then there's another aisle, and somebody kind of creeps along people's knees up to me. Says, pss, 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 you know, hey, 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 hey. And I'm like, what? And they're like, hey, I'm from a film. I... Uh, I'm from the production team of a film called Liquid Sky. You know? I'm like, I don't know what that is. <laughs> okay. And Starlog Magazine, they banned, they banned our film. They banned promoting any promotion of our film in their magazine. We were wondering if we can give you this t-shirt and if you could wear it in the photo for when you put your, when they take the photo of you in the production jacket, and we wonder if you could wear this t-shirt under it. And it was a yellow t-shirt with a big liquid sky and red, red font. And I was like, okay. <laughs> I was like, yeah, sure. I didn't even know, know anything about this film. Never heard of it. And uh, so I was like, yeah, this will be cool. You know, this is exciting for me. You know, I'll have a, one of the coolest t-shirts, ironic t-shirts, I guess, that nobody will know anything about except me, you know? And I have a kind of a direct connection to, you know? So I, I put on this shirt and I, they took the photo, they gathered us up at the end, I took the photo. I said, all right, thank you, yeah, congratulations, blah, 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 blah. And we left. Well, the photo never appeared in Starwalk. They never, uh, they never published it. And it turns out later, I found out why that this film was actually about aliens that lived off women's orgasm. <laughs> I always thought it was kind of funny that I, you know, I think I was, what, in seventh or eighth grade at that point. And uh, here I was walking around high school with this Liquid Sky t-shirt about, about aliens. I think it was probably rated X as far as I know. But uh, Starlog had, had uh, banned it from their magazine. And uh, there I was wearing this t-shirt around high school thinking I was the coolest thing on earth. They had this kind of basic, you're one early ironic tease. So that was my second, second brush. Uh, century, you know, amazing thing that happened. The third amazing thing happened was uh, at the Cocoon panel. I think Cocoon, Ron Howard film, a lot of the uh, older stars and from uh, Hollywood, Jessica Tandy, Hume Crone, I think Wilford Brimley was in it also. And also, uh, And also young people, I think Ali Sheedy and Steve Gutenberg were in it. But the amazing part was Ron Howard had directed it. And you know, this was, you know, my mom, she didn't know a lot about, you know, science fiction films or anything like that. But she knew Ron Howard, you know, she knew Richie Cunningham, she knew Opie from Andy Griffith. And she was pretty, uh, she was pretty interested, you know, she was kind of excited about that herself. So the uh, panel started, me and mom were there and we're watching it. And I, I don't know why, but I left the, auditorium for some reason to go out in the bathroom or or uh, get a drink. I don't know what I, why I left. I don't remember that. But on my way back, I realized the doors were all closed and it was dark inside. So I figured my, we were sitting about halfway down the auditorium. So I went to one of the side doors to get in, opened it up, stepped in, 
it was all completely dark and there was no way I was gonna find my seat. So I just kind of stood at the door and waited for the lights to come up. I guess they were showing clips of the film. And, and so, uh, I guess I'll go down this way. I don't know, we're running all those people. <laughs> and so, uh, I, uh, so I stood there and I waited for, you know, to the lights go up to, before I went back to get my, uh, my seat. And why is this ringing? And so I decided to, uh, I just decided to wait there and I waited for the lights to go back up. And while I'm waiting there, the door opens up behind me and somebody steps in, kind of stands to my, to my, uh, to my right hand shoulder. He stands there watching the film and I turn around and it's, it is Ron Howard. He's standing there watching this film, looking for audience reactions. And I was just kind of stunned. I didn't know what to say. He kind of gave me a note, said hi, a nod and said hi. I said, I, I wasn't gonna, I was one of those people who, who was kind of like, I don't want to be a, I don't want to be a, a fanatic sort of fan and be like, give me an autograph, you know, and, or an opportunist or anything like that. So I, uh, I guess I'll just kind of finish this video here. So I just kind of stood there and watched the film with Ron Howard standing next to me. And the clips ended and, and, uh, and he stepped to, he said, he kind of nodded me, he said, see ya. And, uh, and, uh, and the lights came back up and I went and sat down. I was like, Mom, I just standing next to Ron Howard. Oh, did you get his on? No, no, no. Played it cool. <laughs> Played it cool. And, uh, and so, uh, that was my second brush with fame there. Ron Howard was there. And she was pretty, she was pretty impressed by that too. I mean, she knew Ron Howard, uh, definitely, certainly. And then my third, the third one was kind of the funniest brush. Well, that night, it was kind of interesting because that night, um, you know, we're sleeping in our beds about two in the morning, so all the alarms are going off in the hotel. And, and we go, we, we get up, we go to the door, and we're like, what's going on, what's going on? And we're like, I don't know, fire or something. We just see all these people filtering down the hallway, and we're like, what do we do? <laughs> should we, we should probably leave. You know, so we got ready to leave, and then all of a sudden the alarms went off, and it turns out it was just a false drill. For whatever reason, they were either testing alarms or there was a short in the system. But that was kind of funny uh, in this weekend. Uh, just me and my mom there. And then the last thing was the funniest thing about it was uh, there was one time on the, I think the last day of the convention that me and my mom kind of got separated. I, I was going to one panel and uh, I couldn't find her and she couldn't find me. And uh, I, so I went outside the auditorium looking for her and you know everybody was in the auditorium so the halls were pretty empty. There wasn't a lot of people around. And, uh, and so I went to uh, so I went looking for her, and then I saw her down the hallway, you know, standing with a couple of guys, and I didn't really recognize who these guys were. They were standing outside a doorway, and I got up closer, and it turns out it was uh, it was uh, Chekhov and uh, Spock's father, Mark Leonard and, and Walter Cohen from Star Trek. They were doing a panel there, and I guess they were outside waiting, and my mom had stopped them, and she was asking if they had seen a curly-headed boy running around. And they were like, no, no, we haven't seen him or anything. And, oh, there he is, and I came running up to him. And uh, she, she said, I was just looking for you, you know, and they're like, hello, hello, hello. And I was like, you know, I immediately recognized them. And I said, oh, hello, uh, Mr. Cohen, hello, Mr. Leonard. <laughs> and uh, that, those guys, I got their autograph. And uh, it was just kind of funny because they had, because, uh, you know, like my introduction was my mom looking for me, <laughs> basically. And uh, so that was kind of a special, special moment there for us at the convention. Uh, I'm like, wow, that's Chekhov, and, and do you know who they are? That's like Spock's father. They're in the movie that we're watching, you know? Oh, that's, I didn't know. I didn't know. She was so amazed. <laughs> and, uh, and so, uh, so I just kind of wanted to talk a little bit about that. That was kind of after that we went home, and uh, just kind of one of the special memories I have with just me and my mom, and she kind of helped. She was always kind of there in introducing me to the stars, uh, and kind of, kind of like, uh, you know, she was always somebody who had kind of a beacon when it, when it came to those kinds of things. And I just kind of want to talk a little bit about that and, and say, Mama, I appreciate that. Uh, thank you for giving me one of the better, 
better memories of my life. Uh, I know we always didn't ha see eye to eye on things, and uh, sometimes we had some vicious fights. <laughs> but uh, this is one of the kind of special memories I think that just uh, me and you have, and, and uh, I appreciate that a lot. I uh, love you. Happy Mother's Day. Uh, hope to see you soon.